Sometimes reality is more frightening than fiction. I'm sure you heard of that before, right? Yes. So we got something very interesting here. A story about uh, giving birth, not the natural way, but the very interesting way, a brand new way. And I'm sure you're going to find something very interesting in this. There is a man named Vitaly Buterin, a Russian guy that came up with a concept of creating an um, artificial womb that will carry babies. He came up with a concept that would facilitate ladies in conceiving and giving birth, trying to make things much easier for ladies nowadays. So he says he's trying to bring a distinction, a, a difference in the world, in a sense that uh, so many ladies do not get as much money as men. They are not as financially stable as men. So he says disparity in economic success between men and women are far larger once marriage and children enter the picture. Synthetic wombs would remove the high burden of pregnancy significantly, reducing inequality. So for Vitaly Burden, he feels that the fact that many ladies have to fall pregnant and stay home, take care of the pregnancy and, you know, the kids afterwards, takes a lot out of the financial um, gains that she could be making compared to men that's just, you know, keep it moving, just keep it moving. <laughs> so ladies have much more difficulties staying, you know, afloat, much more issues to make as much money as men because of this uh, one specific uh, difficulties that they have when they fall pregnant and when they have to take care of kids. To find a solution for that, he proposes that people use synthetic wombs in order to bear children. No more pregnancy. No, that's not a good idea. So we need to move forward with the uh, technology. Is technology always a good thing for humanity? I don't know. That's a big question I'm asking you. Please tell me. Do you think every technology improvement means good things for humankind? What do you think? He's come forward. He's gone to Elon Musk, asking Elon Musk to join him on his venture of creating artificial wombs where he will be able to take care of babies or future babies until they grow to the level that they need to grow in order to produce at will. No more having to carry babies in your stomach anymore, ladies. You know, more freedom, more equality, more... Um, less disparity financially. His project is called Ectolife, Baby in a Pod, the world's first artificial womb, ladies and gentlemen. Ectolife is a concept that offers parents to produce customized babies with the help of artificial wombs. An elite package would allow people to choose their baby level of intelligence. Yeah, you want a very clever baby, you can have one. Height, you want six foot three or four or five, ladies, I know you like that. Um, hair color, eyes colors, blue, green, I don't know, physical strength, and even more, skin tone, I know for many, many people in the continent like <laughs> light skin so yeah there you go you got the opportunity to actually choose what you really really want what you want to do with your babies no more surprises oh he's ugly no no more no, none of that. You can actually edit your baby genetics as you like. So they say the facility will run on renewable energy, of course. You know, they're promoting renewable energy lately with global warming. So it actually really goes together with the concept of uh, renewable energy plants ours. 75 labs, each equipped up to 400 growth pod of artificial wombs, able to create up to 30,000 babies a year. So you can order your baby. Um, in advance. So who is this man, Vitaly Buterin? Vitaly Buterin is a co-founder of Ethereum. Ethereum, yes. Um, the decentralized open source blockchain with smart contract functionality. For those of you who don't know, Ethereum is um, a means of uh, financial transaction, very similar to Bitcoin. I know many people know Bitcoin. So this man is a co-founder of Ethereum. He's worth $1.5 billion. So he's not a poor guy. He's a rich guy. And you know, have you noticed that generally when somebody's very rich, people don't really question him, don't question his values, his integrity and stuff like that. Have you, have you noticed that? Right? You just, oh, because so-and-so did it. Oh, Bill Gates did it. Oh, um, what's the other guy's name? The bold guy name? Amazon guy. People don't question the integrity and the values and the end goal of these people as long as they're very rich. So Vitalik Buterin came to Elon Musk asking to work together and in some ways, I believe Elon Musk kind of agreed with him uh, because he said on a tweet, he said, we should be much more worried about population collapse and that's opposing what Bill Gates said earlier. When our foundation first started up, it was focused on reproductive health. That was the main thing we did because I thought, you know, population growth in poor countries is the biggest problem they face. You've got to help mothers who want to limit family size have the tools and education to do that. Bill Gates says the population is way too much, so we need to find possibilities of reducing the population. You, you heard of that, right? And Elon Musk saying this is bullshit. He says the UN projections are nonsense. Just multiply last year birth rate by life expectancy and you get the result. So he disagrees with Bill Gates. He says if there aren't enough people on Earth, then there will definitely not be enough people for Mars.
you know, he is working on the project on how to get people to Mars. I don't know why people don't care about Earth. People are more worried about Mars than they are worried about Earth. Instead of finding solutions for Earth and trying to make life better for everybody, everybody's more focused on what's happening on the other side. I don't know. Have you noticed that? That's a bit crazy, isn't it? So yeah, fellas, there are reactions on Twitter. This lady says, it's so deeply regressive to still burying the children exact the same way we have for a gazillion years. Literally, every other technology in the world has advanced, even despite limitation. So should this. It should be as easy as I can believe we wanted it that way as anything else. It's been like this for way too long. It's time to change. Um... Yeah, it is frustrating. This other lady named Devon says, I couldn't agree more. It's sad for me as a woman that I have to choose between A, having no kid, B, putting my health at risk to do so. I for once would love to have more options. So she feels like it shouldn't be that way just once not having kids because you're too scared to have, you know, to do things the normal way or putting your health at risk. To her, she believes that every time you bear children, you're putting your health at risk. I don't know if many people agree with that, but I don't know if you can say that to many African ladies that bear six, seven, eight children in a lifetime and still be very happy until they die. I don't know if you can really, they can relate to that. So it really depends. Now this lady that's very emphatic says she was responding to the other ladies. I think your synthetic brain's implants have gone wrong. Pregnancy was once one of the most wonderful experiences of my life, connecting me to the earth energy like nothing else. Why would I give that up for anything? You would need to look at your connection to the natural world. So she feels like pregnancy was one of the most natural things, one of the most amazing experiences she's had. And these people need to check themselves up. And this other guy says, so grow babies in lab or what? Just like in the Matrix. Very interesting. I think things have changed. Bitcoin never existed in the past. Today, many of you have adopted it. Now, the Ethereum creator comes up with an idea of you having a better life, supposedly not having to bear children, giving it to machines. So that will allow you as ladies to make more money, to have equality. I don't know. What is your goal? That's the big question. Um, are you looking for equality or are you looking to be happy? Do you feel you're going to be more happy by being equal to somebody financially? Or would you just be happy by having what you need? To be happy those are the big questions and then i think this comes with big choices do you want to keep the world the way it is the way god created it to be with so much inspiration so much natural energy or do you want it to change to have things on command you can plan and order your baby one year in advance and have it set the way you want it blue eyes long legs or thin mouth i don't know how you want it is that how you want life what about the surprise what about natural things what about the excitement of going to the hospital and finding out is it a boy or a girl what about all that what about the gift of the creator the uncertainty of life isn't that the magic that we all seek for in some ways or do you want a life where everything is pre-programmed for you how about in the next couple of years when they say you have done uh, something negative you got criminal charge so you don't have the right to have any babies in the incubator for the 10 years so instead of you going to prison you're gonna have 10 years of no incubation for some i mean yeah that's just the beginning isn't it it first started as okay we have a way to sort of prevent genetically transmitted disease from parent to children we can select that into the machine to finally guys we don't like what you're doing you've been uh, you know disobedient to the government or you've been doing something that's not necessarily good therefore you are obstructed from benefiting with the pleasure of having a baby for the next 10 years is that what you want for the future i don't know atrium today is worth one thousand five hundred dollars twenty five thousand south african rand um very interesting so this guy is one of the, the founders he's got a lot of money like i said people with money come up with ideas some of the craziest idea ever we tend to just adopt them without necessarily questioning the goals and objectives i don't feel like like personally i don't feel like people come up with all these ideas of technologies with pure intentions i think there are always fine lines of find readings that people don't necessarily see that comes with it control in some ways yeah in many many ways so please tell me how you feel about this i understand some ladies they are in real difficulties of conceiving how about surrogate moms how about that natural things normal things you i mean what else can we modify genetically into bringing technology into the highest level of society i don't know how about the option that we have is, is that not good enough is that not worth it god bless